Hi everyone, uh, welcome to uh, another Table Talk. So uh, just before I get into the uh, the meat of the video, I just wanted to give a shout out to uh, Ground Control RC. Uh, he's uh, probably, his channel is probably my favorite uh, RC uh, YouTube channel. Um, I've just learned so much from him and he puts in so much work uh, into his content on all kinds of tips, tutorials, reviews, that sort of stuff. So uh, anyway, uh, as of uh, uh, me speaking to you right now, he was at 999 subscribers. Uh, so if you haven't already, please go over and, uh, and check out his channel and uh, consider uh, subscribing, get him, get him over that magic uh, thousand. So uh, yeah, Ground Control RC, I'll have a link to uh, his uh, channel, Patreon site, and Facebook page down below. All right, so today um, I, I get asked, uh, you know, over time what my favorite things are or what uh, different components and things that I use. So uh, I, I do have a uh, Parkjet Workbench uh, Workshop uh, playlist, uh, very, which is very detailed about a lot of the things uh, that I use, why I use them, you know, so a lot more background. I'll have that link down below, but I just, I just, in this video, I just kind of wanted to, uh, you know, quickly summarize um, the things, some of the questions and things that I probably get asked uh, the most, you know, over time after, you know, I'm uh, looking through my comments on my YouTube videos, uh, RC Powers Forum, uh, my blog, things like that. So, uh, anyway, so hopefully that's uh, what this is going to be. Um, so I, I have dated this video because obviously, uh, you know, as I change and evolve as a park jet builder and pilot and, uh, you know, as things become, uh, other things become available to me or, you know, not available to me, obviously uh, things will change. So, you know, maybe in the future sometime uh, I'll do another uh, video. But uh, anyway. Okay, so uh, just a, a quickly on um, uh, build materials, uh, I probably now, especially because here in Canada, I essentially can't get uh, uh, Depron anymore. I used to love building with Depron. It's, you know, it's just a great foam to work with. It, most, it was the most expensive uh, foam, but uh, requires very little, uh, uh, it's you know, definitely stiffer. Uh, and stronger than uh, most foams that I've used. Uh, but now I probably, uh, most of my builds are uh, some sort of hybrid. Um, I you know I use a lot of Dollar Tree foam because it's inexpensive and also I found that I can, uh, you know, build really good high performance and durable airplanes out of it. It's a bit fussy to work with, you know, to get it all sealed and make sure that the paper, you know, trimming the paper off and then making sure the paper that's left behind uh, is waterproof, but you know it's well worth it. Uh, I also like to use uh, you know some uh, of my scrap Depron that I have left in areas to give me the strength that I need, um, you know, without adding any weight. And also sometimes I will use uh, model plane foam, like with I did with my recent F thirty five version five. You know, if I just want to get a plane built and I don't want to have to mess around with. Uh, with the Dollar Tree foam and sealing it and all that sort of stuff. So those are my uh, my uh, my three foams that I build with. Uh, glue, uh, I actually use a multitude of glues uh, when I build. Uh, hot glue, uh, epoxy, uh, Gorilla Glue. Uh, you know, I like to use this foaming Gorilla Glue just, to, you know, mostly around motor mounts and things like that where I really, really need to have all the you know, gaps filled and have it uh, super strong. Um, Probably my favorite glue, I use this, uh, this is Kraft Medley Premium Kraft Glue. Uh, luckily enough, I can still get it at my local Dollar Tree store. Uh, but I can tell you from experience that it's exactly the same uh, from a building standpoint as uh, Bob Smith Industries Foam Cure. Uh, now this is, uh, you know, I got this one from Hobby King a long time ago. It actually, I might actually need to use it pretty soon because it looks like it's starting to get a little thick. Um, I went on their website, Hobby King's website. It looks like it's only sold through the USA warehouse right now. Uh, but, you know, Bob Smith Industries uh, is a big adhesive uh, company in the hobby uh, market. So, you know, you might be able to find it at a local hobby shop or if you uh, looked around uh, online, depending on where you live. Uh, but the reason, the main reason that I like it is it dries this, it, it dries essentially like epoxy, but it doesn't require any mixing. Um, although it does take uh, quite a bit longer and it also needs essentially to be exposed to the air. I don't use it for putting in my reinforcement because 
Uh, I experimented with that and I just found it took forever and ever and ever for it to, to completely cure. So it does like to be have uh, good exposure to the air. Uh, it dries light, dries very, very strong, and it's also sandable. So uh, that's the, those are the features that I like about it. Uh, okay, for tape, uh, probably my favorite tape. This is actually uh, 3M Scotchgard uh, transparent uh, tough uh, duct tape. And um, of course, I can never find the end of it when, uh, when I'm shooting a video here, but it, uh, it has very, oh, here we go. It has uh, lots of uh, crisscross strong fibers in it. Uh, I've also experimented with, um, uh, so you can see there. I've also experimented with Duck, D-U-C-K uh, brand duct tape. Uh, it uh, works okay, but not as well. I find that the adhesive on this tape is, it, it sticks forever to uh, uh, every foam, essentially, that I use. You know, I've got some planes with four or five hundred flights on them using this as the hinge material. Uh, you know, touch wood, never had a problem with it coming, uh, coming off. It's also great for repairs or if I need to... Uh, uh, you know, put some tape somewhere to help protect the foam if I'm flying in the snow or, uh, you know, that sort of stuff. So, uh, definitely well worth uh, the, uh, the extra money. Uh, it is shiny, but if you sand it, uh, you know, give it a, a, a good uh, buff with some uh, 150 grit uh, sandpaper to take all that shine off it. It'll uh, take paint no problem whatsoever, and uh, the paint uh, shouldn't chip or, or flake off. Uh, for paint, um, I use uh, uh, trans or, uh, transparent uh, acrylic, uh, you know, water-based uh, craft paints. I get them from the dollar store, uh, Walmart, uh, craft stores, things like that. Uh, I have experimented when I built my F-35 recently. I actually use all gloss acrylic. Uh, I probably wouldn't do that again because I found um, that the uh, depending on the sun angle, when I would turn the plane, it would like the whole plane would be like a, a glare and the colors would wash out. So I find that flat is probably the best if I want to actually be able to see my plane because it doesn't, you know, go, uh, there's no glare. I do sometimes just, uh, I, I will use gloss acrylic for the canopies just because, you, you know, you get a, a bit of a canopy flash. Uh, off it now and then in the sun, so that helps with orientation. So yeah, just just inexpensive uh, acrylic craft paints. Uh, like anything else, if you want good quality, good co uh, coverage, the pigments in the more expensive ones that you might buy from uh, you know Michaels or some other uh, good uh, craft store are a little bit better. But you know, in the long run, the ones from the dollar store work uh, just fine. And then you know, for like super lightweight, uh, you know, very quick and easy uh, paint schemes, and I don't want to add any weight whatsoever. I just use a good old magic marker. I find you know, I just luckily most of the ones that I get at the dollar store never had any problems with them, uh, you know, bleeding off onto my hands or anything like that. And uh, you know, you can just do a quick. Uh, a quick touch up with uh, with the marker and uh, you know just adds no weight and you know put some color on your plane all right uh, so that's uh, materials okay planes well uh, you know I guess it's no uh, it's no big secret uh, be mostly because I helped uh, uh, with the design and development of this this is the NAMSI North American North American MIG consortium uh, MIG 35B uh, we, we no longer have a website, uh, but you can uh, get it. Uh, the guys at Park Flyers International were uh, kind enough to host our plans on the site. So the plans for the MiG-35B and the SU-27, uh, you can get those by donation. Um, the reason that this is my favorite uh, plane uh, overall, it's uh, definitely the most stable. It's also the best in the wind of all the planes that I fly. Uh, it's not the fastest, it's not the most agile, it doesn't have the broadest uh, uh, speed spectrum, you know, from super slow up to, uh, to super fast, but it's one of those planes that, you know, obviously it leads, it's the number one in stability and wind, uh, handling the wind for me, but it's, it's not the best in many other categories, but it's like right there, you know, number two. So, uh, you know, it's a fairly straightforward build. Um, we we did, we spent a lot of time in the design of it, so you know I know uh, what's gone into it. But uh, yeah, it's 
it's just my favorite park jet uh, of all time and, and probably will continue to be. I just, I've always loved flying the MiG anyway, and this obviously is the, is the MiG for me, the Nancy MiG 35B. So, um, my favorite RC Powers plane uh, now is, uh, without a doubt, the SU-30 uh, version 4. Um, obviously, I have modified this one uh, considerably. It doesn't have the canards and I've made uh, other modifications to it. Uh, the reason that I like this plane is that it's a, it has a low parts count. It's very easy to build. It takes modifications really, really well. The motor is in a perfect position stock on the plan, so I don't ever have to mess around with the motor. Uh, I do obviously move the uh, leading edge of the prop slot forward because of the quad racing motor. Uh, but other than that, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's just, and it's, it's fast, it's agile. Let me see, you know, I took a bunch of notes here. So, uh, it's, it's, you know, you can build it to be really fast, sleek. Uh, and even if you don't want to go fast, it's very efficient through the air. Uh, it just has a great profile, a very wide speed envelope. Um, you know, from slow, it, it's probably, it's faster than my MiG-35. Uh, even built at the same size, uh, but it also can go down slower. I find actually, uh, you know, the times that I do feel like doing high alpha or whatever, I don't even bother with flapperons or spoilerons. I find it will go, do good, decent scale high alpha with, uh, you know, just elevons and rudders. I mean, it was designed to be the hovering park jet, uh, so that's probably why. And after the MiG-35, it's probably the most stable second most stable plane uh, in the wind uh, and overall um, that I that I fly so uh, yeah um, I will say actually if of the lineups of uh, RC Powers planes and I've built uh, RC Powers planes from you know V1 through V5 I would probably say that the V5s I mean there's a couple of exceptions in there that I built that I didn't really like so much but I like the um, I like the thought process that went into it. They're they're straightforward. They're low parts count. They're easy to build. You know you can get in the air really qu really quickly. Uh, they take modifications really uh, easily, and uh, you know you can set them up uh, to whatever way that you want. Uh, some of them they're a little bit big, so I tend for what I like I tend to downsize them. But uh, other than you know a couple of exceptions which they were good planes, just not exactly what I liked. Um, I've been very, very pleased with all the V5s that I've built. In fact, some of them, the F-22 and the F-18 version 5, I've, I've built uh, two of those. Uh, so really, uh, really, really been pleased with those. Um, okay, transmitter. Well, um, I'm obviously, I you know, this is my good old uh, Turnigy 9X. I've been using this for about seven years now. My first transmitter was a, a, a Spectrum DX6i, which I know are still a very popular transmitter, but what I found was I outgrew that uh, very quickly. So one of the main reasons that I got this was at the time it was uh, uh, upgradable to ER9X, which uh, was a predecessor of OpenTX. In fact, when I upgraded mine, OpenTX was just in its infancy. Uh, so I chose to go with ER9X because OpenTX, there were still uh, you know, some bugs and stability issues being worked out in the firmware. Uh, but I think in a lot of ways, I've looked at uh, guys at my field who have uh, you know, Tyrannus or other transmitters with OpenTX, and there's a lot of similarities. And the thing that I like about uh, ER9X, OpenTX, obviously it's firmware, so it, you know, it can be upgradable uh, later on. And it's very, very uh, um, easy once you, you know, once you sort of set up your first plane, it's very easy to, you know, get a plane set up and you can, you know, there's, there's no, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about master slave. You can set up, you can make any servo do whatever you want. You can fine tune them in whatever way you want. It's really, uh, you know, even though the ER9X is old firmware, uh, the only thing that limits me is my uh, imagination. Uh, the other thing with this one is, uh, you know, they call it a nine channel. I suppose it is, but if, you know, if I need to, like with my tail, tail mount uh, FRC Foamies F-18, I was at first thought I was going to play around with V-tails, uh, you know, and as air brakes, so I can run an eight channel uh, receiver if I want to. Uh, normally I just run uh, a six channel. 
So, you know, if money was no object and I had to upgrade, I, I would more than likely stay sort of with an open TX type transmitter. Uh, FR Sky, I just find that they're, most of the receivers seem to be really, really expensive. The ex receivers for this are very inexpensive, and I think, you know, if you're going to have six or seven planes in your hangar at a time, uh, you know, that's where you can get, you know, killed is on the uh, receivers. It's like when you buy a printer these days, it's not the printer that's expensive, it's the it's the ink refills that are expensive. But uh, anyway, uh, this is, I, bought, I did buy a spare of this, just basically of the box, uh, years ago when they were on sale, you know, so that if I have to replace any switches, but, uh, you know, it's just a straightforward, um, um, you know, tough, tough as nails uh, so thus far. I actually run it with a uh, 1500 milliamp 3S Lifey battery, which I get from uh, Hobby King, which is just, you know, great because I can, I fly a lot and, uh, you know, I maybe only have to charge that battery like every two weeks or whatever. Works uh, really, really well. Um, if, you know, right now, uh, you know, if I didn't have a lot of money, uh, quite honestly, if, if my Turnigy 9X just packed it in, um, I would go with this uh, very inexpensive and popular FlySky FSI-6. Uh, I did, um, you know, based on some questions that I had posed to me well over a year ago, I chose to just pick one of these up and do a long-term uh, review and analysis on this as a beginner transmitter and as a transmitter that you know you can use uh, long term in park jets. Now certainly it doesn't have quite the mixing versatility that the uh, um, my 9X with the ER9X firmware has but quite honestly for you know just a six channel uh, or a six servo setup that I run on most of my park jets uh, this this is just an awesome. I mean, it's, it I, just makes me smile that how inexpensive this transmitter is, and and uh, how capable it is. And also, again, uh, you have the choice of a couple of different types of receivers, six channel receivers, and those are really inexpensive as well. So, yeah, if I, again, like I said, probably more than likely, if that, if and when that nine uh, X ever packs it in. I'll probably just stay with my uh, uh, FSI-6 and I'll have a playlist, a uh, link to the playlist down below, pardon me, of all my lessons learned, uh, you know, good, bad and indifferent on this uh, transmitter, uh, FlySky FSI-6, uh, just, just an awesome uh, value for the money uh, in my uh, opinion. Um, okay, so let's get to the where the rubber really hits the road here, excuse me. Uh, power systems. Now, obviously, uh, I just did an in-depth review on my favorite motor, the GEP RC uh, 2306 2750. You know, a long-term review after over a year of use. Uh, so, some of these components are not, uh, um, you know, the cheapest in the world. But, like I said, because I do fly a lot, I average, uh, you know, 12, 1,200 or more flights per year. So, like 100 flights a month in all different uh, weather conditions. Uh, I've just found that it's worth my while to get, uh, spend a little extra money at the time, get really good components, and then I'm not, you know, to every time I turn around I gotta order another speed controller or motor or battery, that sort of thing, long term. It just saves me the hassle and uh, probably saves me some money. Um, okay, so yeah, uh, like I've already said, uh, the GEP RC GR2306 uh, 2750 KV motor. It's just an absolute beast. I'll have a link to my uh, my uh, year-long, uh, long-term review on this uh, for more details. Just, just really, really love this motor. Uh, speed controller, um, the Hobbywing Platinum Pro 40 amp speed controller. Again, uh, not the cheapest in the world, but I have punished the living daylights out of this speed controller for a long, long time. Uh, it is, it, it is, you know, about forty dollars US, which is not cheap. But the thing that I love about it is that it, it does what it's rated to do. You know, lots of times I've used speed controllers uh, that, you know, they say that they're, they're a particular rating. And based on the amount of heat that's in them when they come down, I, I, I have problems believing that. But with this one, uh, 3S and 4S, uh, even on this piece of the motor, it just performs uh, exceptionally well. So, uh, yeah, Hobbywing Platinum Pro. And as I've mentioned in this the video on this 
motor. I run custom settings on the quad motors of 26.25 degrees timing and 8 kilohertz on the pulse width modulation frequency. I just found over a long period of testing that that was the best uh, setting, uh, best uh, combination of custom settings for quad racing motors, this one and uh, others. Okay, props. Uh, my new favorite prop has is the uh, Gem Fan Flash 6040 2x2 two two prop. Uh, for the longest time, my favorite was the uh, AP 6x4 APC Gas, but definitely this provides a better, better speed, better thrust. Uh, I think it's not as stiff as the 6x4 EPC, but it's a uh, you know it's a very very durable prop, and it's also uh, quite a bit less expensive. It's less than half the price what the 6x4 EPC gas props were costing me. So on 3S, uh, Gemfan Flash 6042x2. If I need to run a five blade um, uh, or five inch three blade prop, uh, Gemfan Hurricane. Uh, 51 uh, 499 by 3 on, on a quad racing motor anyway um, on 4S uh, you know I like the 6x3 uh, EMP electric sport prop from RC Timer also sold as KMP by Banggood or TGS by uh, Hobby King uh, just the best for uh, 4S really just gives me some super good power with the, uh, the GEP RC if I have to run on four a lot on 4S with the GEP RC motor, I like the Azure Power 5150x3 carbon prop, mostly because it's so stiff, especially on 4S when you're really cranking the RPM up. Uh, there's just uh, next to no power lost in prop flex. So, uh, yeah, that's why I like that one on 4S. Uh, servos. Okay, I use uh, servos. I been getting my servos from RC Timer for a very very long time. Uh, these are the RC Timer uh, 9 gram uh, nylon gear servos. I use these on my uh, Elevons. They're they're quiet. They're smooth. Uh, this arm also uh, has is a little bit longer. It has one more hole than you know your HXT 500s that sort of stuff. Uh, just I've loved them, and the other thing is that they, they their price has actually stayed the same for years. It's like a dollar ninety eight American per servo. Um, sometimes the shipping from RC Timer is uh, a bit slow, so I always make sure that I have uh, lots of these. But I've actually only ever I think I've had one wear out on me and one I stripped, but uh, that was when the weather was super cold and I got a bit too aggressive, and I think the uh, the nylon just couldn't hand, uh, stand up to the stress. <coughs> Pardon me, for my ailerons and rudders, I use the RC Timer uh, 5 gram servo. Uh, I just find, you know, I save quite a bit of weight. I save about 20 grams of weight or more than using uh, 6 9 gram servos and uh, touch wood. I've never had a problem with one of these 5 gram servos uh, stripping on my rudders or my ailerons uh, on my park jets. Uh, so they are a bit more expensive than a 9 gram servo, but you know. If you're really wanting to keep the weight down, uh, they're a great uh, option. Uh, I, I actually have been asked about my, my control horns. Uh, probably my go-to is uh, this style here from uh, uh, Flight Test. I can get them from a vendor uh, in Canada. I like the fact that they have three holes in them so I, I can you know quickly uh, adjust my throw uh, mechanically just by moving my uh, clevis to a different uh, pin. Uh, also, compared to a lot of other uh, um, control horns that I've used, is this hole at the bottom here uh, ends up being fairly close. <coughs> pardon me, to the hinge line, so I can get that you know uh, really um, get good uh, resolution and authority uh, out of my servos that way. So. Uh, okay, uh, going back to power systems, I was looking right at them and I, and I sort of forgot them. My favorite batteries um, right now, I, I, do, I am in the process of reviewing uh, um, some GNB batteries, which are a little bit less expensive than, than these batteries, uh, both in 3S and 4S. And also a uh, Tattoo uh, 2300 uh, 3S 45C. Uh, these are the Gen Zace uh, 2200 3S uh, 45C. Pardon me. I have some of them now that I've been using for well over a year. Excuse me. And I'm 
just super impressed with their uh, with their performance. Um, you know, I'm, some of them I'm sure I have close to a hundred cycles or more on them now, and they're still delivering delivering uh, excellent performance. Uh, as you would expect, sometimes they take a little bit longer uh, to charge up, especially on balance charge. But it's mostly just the balance function that takes a little bit longer. So 3S uh, Gen's Ace 2200 um, 3S 45C. Uh, on 4S, currently, uh, the Tattoo R-Line 1550 uh, 4S 75C, uh, these are actually version 1.0. I've been watching some reviews recently now. They're actually up to version 3.0 uh, in these batteries, but these, these are uh, outstanding. I just recently did an updated review on these. I have 35-plus uh, flights now. Uh, just, just deliver unbelievably... Uh, Good power if you really want to scare yourself on uh, 4S. So, uh, yeah, so there we go, folks. That's kind of a summary of, uh, of my favorite park jet things as of June of 2019. Uh, again, if you want more details, uh, please go down to um, the comments in the, or the, in the video description. I'll have a link to the playlist of my park jet workshop, which covers... Uh, a lot of stuff as well as links to some uh, other videos and things that I mentioned uh, here. So uh, I hope that that's been helpful to you. Um, uh, you know, and again, like I said, maybe I'll be doing another one of these things in the coming months and years, depending on, uh, you know, things that I discover and, uh, you know, or things that are become available to me or go away that I can't use. Uh, so thanks, uh, thanks as always for watching. Blue skies, calm winds to everyone. Park Jet Noise, the other side of Freedom Baby. Take care.